So to find the molecular geometry for PF5, we'll first look at the Lewis structure. We can see we have five fluorine atoms attached around that central phosphorus atom. According to valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, those fluorines are going to spread out as far away from each other as they can and still remain bonded to the phosphorus atom. When they do that, we can kind of imagine in three dimensions what that might look like, and that would give us the molecular geometry for PF5. That would look something like this. So we have the phosphorus in the middle, and then around it we have these fluorine atoms. So you can see those fluorine atoms have really spread out around the central phosphorus atom. This gives us a trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry for PF5. If you couldn't visualize that, you can always use the AXN notation to figure out the molecular geometry. A, that's the phosphorus. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to the phosphorus. We have five fluorine atoms. And N, that's the number of non-bonding electron pairs. Well, all of the electron pairs are involved in chemical bonds with the phosphorus, so we can just ignore N. So we end up with a molecular geometry of AX5. You may have memorized that AX5 is a trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry, but if not, you may be able to use a table. So going down our table, we have AX2, AX3, 4, and there's AX5, and it's trigonal bipyramidal. It also gives us some bond angles to work with. We can see that the bond angle between these two fluorine atoms here, this one and this one, is 120 degrees. That'll be the same over here as well, and then on the other side. The bond angle between this and this one is going to be 90. Same here. That's a 90 degree bond angle. So that's the molecular geometry for PF5. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.